Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Well, what is the PMP? Why, that's the Painters Motivating Painters, our Facebook group where we get together every month and we review the submissions made by our brave volunteers uh, for any work that they wanted to submit. Each month has its own theme and this month's theme is armor or vehicles. Uh, there was a little confusion on that. I really should have just used a different word. I went for armor, the more flourishy word, but armor meaning the traditional use of armor, like in the military terms of vehicles, tanks, you know, that kind of stuff, robots. Uh, and so not people in armor. So just as a word of warning up top, I did have to remove a lot of submissions from this month that were things that aren't what I was looking for. Uh, so I apologize if in any way I was unclear. Uh, next month is single figure. A lot of most of those things that were submitted were single figure, so they probably qualify for next month. So you can certainly just submit them in there, and, and we'll review them at that time if you should feel like it. Or if you want to do a different figure, that's okay. Uh, at any rate, uh, what we do here is we go over all the submissions. We look at what the uh, but the person has asked for. Remember every submission. Uh, of which no one can put in more than one a month and everybody should do the one in theme and you should put it in with a specific question of what you uh, felt challenged with or want to see help with or want feedback on. Uh, don't write me a novel. Give me some very quick bullet points of what you were hoping to receive feedback on. Uh, and so this month looked pretty good. Most people were pretty concise, which I appreciate. Uh, two sentences of what you uh, generally want to, uh, two sentences of what you generally want to get feedback on is much more valuable than a novel. <laughs> so, uh, very much looking forward to these. As usual, we're going to be as quick as we can. Uh, there are still a lot of submissions, and so, uh, you know, I with a limited amount of time we want to get hit the most people and give the most valuable feedback we can uh vehicles present a unique challenge as there's multiple different ways to approach them we have a more traditioning sort of scale modeling style we have a more miniature pa uh, fig painterly style we got lots of options uh, of how to approach them there is no single right answer vehicles also present us a really nice chance to do stuff like weathering and battle damage in cool ways inorganic angles and shapes and things that we don't generally get to play with so uh really excited about this one i personally love painting vehicles it's one of my favorite things that's why i definitely wanted a, a whole two months out of the year dedicated to it uh so let's get into it if you want to join us on your hobby journey we welcome everybody from uh from just starting out in their journey to master uh, you're all welcome to join this wonderful, positive, hobby-focused community. The link is down below. If you do attempt to join, make sure you answer all three questions. If you don't answer all three, you don't get in. It's that easy. Okay, so first up from uh, Rob, uh, who says, White is difficult for me. Uh, going for Stark White could have made some uh, blue glow with the weapon, part of his large Tau project. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of you do work on this Tau. You know, I mean, my answer with this is... if. If your goal was to have this sort of very clean, almost uh, Games Workshop-esque, slightly sort of style with very uh, just, you know, bright, clear, concise, smooth colors, you definitely did that. Things like the white is very clean and crisp. Everything is applied very smoothly, very precisely. Uh, you know, ultimately, I think what would benefit here is something like having a little more contrast in this piece it's you can do a lot of great things with gray and it can really make the white pop and seem brighter uh cult of paint actually did a great video on shading white vehicles uh rob which i would recommend you to go check out um if you wanted to go that direction that's what i would ultimately recommend because it's going to make the white look brighter if you have a little bit of even soft grays in there and, you know, if you're doing it with an airbrush, which is, again, how they show it and what you're usually going to do on these big vehicles, it's a pretty straightforward process and uh, and can really make it pop. So, I mean, as it is, though, as far as, like, so you know, painting something for a tabletop, because you said, you know, this is just an army you wanted to get through and get on the table, I think this is absolutely fine. Crisp, clean, smooth as butter. Uh, you know, obviously just your next step would be to pump the contrast on, on everything. Tau vehicles don't have to be scratched and weathered and dinged and all that. They can look pretty clean and new. That's kind of part of the, you know, Tau and Eldar vehicles can both be that way. I think, and that's fine. It works with their aesthetic, but 
you can always go that direction. So there you go, Rob. Hope that helps. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got Scott uh, Loader from Loader Mech from Black Sight Studios. Uh, goal was for a used realistic finish. Yeah, so I think this is nice. Um, you know, there's you've got like I like the color. It does feel very sort of you know exactly what you said realistic. Um, we're going to talk a lot, a lot about battle damage and scratching and wear in this uh, video. So um, I'm not going to drop it all right here. But I'll say that in general, the rust looks a little unnatural. Um, it doesn't have the density we would expect or the color variation I would expect in this kind of a thing. So for example, when you have these scratches here, I don't see the smaller bits and chips that we would normally get. Like you want to have if you're going to get chunks that big out of it, then there should be smaller little tiny dings on the edges. Uh, and those should kind of carry through uh, throughout the piece, right? Every edge. If we're going to have that kind of wear, there would be smaller wear that had been chipped and chipped and chipped and turned into bigger wear. Um, I would also expect a little more streaking. If there's that much chipped away, then there's going to be a lot more streaking. So you want to use more of like an oil product or a streaking grime and use a more traditional scale modeling technique of like where they'll put some paint on and then remove almost all of it in a vertical fashion and then sort of repeat multiple times to give this like multiple light streaked effect of, you know, sort of water and detritus running down and leaving dust and debris uh, there. So uh, that's probably the number one thing that jumps out at me right away is that all of the little chips are kind of the same size they're all very equal they there's no smaller stuff there's no uh anywhere else in scratches or things that i would normally expect it so for example he has grippy grippy loader hands and yet like i would expect those to be the most heavily scratched because he's constantly going in picking up a thing turning and like loading it onto something so his hand is going to naturally be like scraping whatever he's loading into scraping on whatever he's picking up like i would ex one of the things you have to get with damage and we'll talk about this as we go on is it has to feel organic. It has to feel like it's happening to the places we would expect it to happen to. So every bit of damage and weathering has a, a home, a location, a natural place. Your brain just kind of senses where these things are supposed to be occurring. And uh, in this case, like that area is that the areas that receive the highest touch on vehicles uh, are going to tend to be the most scratched, damaged, weathered, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, but overall, cool product. I do like your color mixture. I think the base of the, the green and the, the sort of general uh, kind of wearing on that actually looks really nice. So I think that looks good. Okay. Next up, uh, Edward, uh, take on Far Stride. Uh, says he wish he'd done something a bit better with the sword. Yeah, I mean, so I, I looked at this one and my, my biggest piece of feedback for you is our... Our Ed, like, because this this piece, this angle will be fine. I do agree the sword's boring. It could definitely use anything, <laughs> would be my answer. You could keep it in regular metals. It would just need a lot more, like, non-metallic style shading and highlighting. But the biggest thing I see on this one is that the edge highlights are just way out of size. We, we've got it. If we're going to do edge highlights like this, if it's going to be this line trace thing in GW style, we've got to get these down to, like, a razor's edge. They have to be super duper fine. And if you can't paint that thin of a line, that's fine. You just need to go back in with your base tone and push into each side of the line until it gets real thin. So you would take the gray and trace along this edge and trace and trace and trace and push it up. And then you'd come here and you'd push it up until you got one little itty bitty bitty thin line in the middle and you'd do that all over. If you can't get the side of the brush or you can't get your, you know, your paint flowing well enough. But that's the number one thing that jumps out at me here. Okay. All right hope that helps okay david meyer uh warglaive uh staying in the armor theme no question i mean it's definitely a vehicle uh yeah i mean this guy looks good um i like a lot of the sort of weathering you've got going on here uh well this shot i think is real nice uh the kind of general weathering again around the top where the water would collect it collecting around the rivets uh underneath this little you know handle that the person would use to climb in the the vehicle uh i think that works well um you know it's it's collecting pretty naturally where i would expect it uh the some of the metals feel a little flat overall like that is to say they're weathered but they're not shaded there's no volumetric highlighting to them and so with with metal paints you want to make sure before you do any kind of weathering or streaking on them that you do still apply those kind of volumetric highlights that you create lights and shadows on the true metals 
then you weather them that makes it feel natural and then kind of in the end it's often go it's a good to go back into your vehicle and put a light environmental shadow over everything um yeah i mean i it's it's probably worth a whole video just to talk about but um but that you know so that's the only thing that jumps out at me is the metals feel flat the green eye glow works fine for me you could use a little bit darker ring around the eye itself it feels a little bit like airbrush like psh, shot but um like a darker ring would help that and a brighter light in the center would help kind of separate those two out but it's not you know it's not bad or anything um yeah all in all i think it's a it's a it's a good take on the on the model uh the base is like way too red i don't know what is going on there if that's just the photo but that is like way too red without variants like we got to get some kind of shading in there like it just looks it looks like cake frosting on top of something else because you got this dark edge on the side like i don't know what is going on there on that base but that's that's we got to do something with that so that's what i would say uh but overall cool cool work okay next up uh I, I did leave both the silent kings in here there was two people who did these this guy was like it was close enough i was willing to let it fly i wasn't really looking for to review a human figure which the silent king is but being that he's on a giant vehicle and stuff i was like okay i'll i'll let this be uh so because i i don't know what this monstrosity is uh so Basically, as you said, the Silent King is trying to achieve an old but well-maintained look to the metals. Okay, sure. So, we got a... Part of the problem here is your pictures are far away, like, and small. Um, so, like, let's see how close we can we can get this. Like, we got to take more better, bigger pictures. Um, if you're going to do this with your phone, like, you know, shoot them well and in a large format and make sure you upload them. Now, as far as the metal goes, if we're talking about older metal, I mean, no, this doesn't feel like older metal. Simple answer, right? Because older metal has a really natural thing to it. It's going to corrode, like it's going to turn oxidized. Uh, if it isn't that, if you mean non-polished, then you need to increase the shading of matte black surfaces on there, right? Um, so that's old metal that isn't weathered, that's just not been sort of polished up, then it tends to go flat, right? It isn't as shiny. We still have too much shine and stuff like that on here. Now, as far as things like the OSL and the color goes, yeah, I think those all work. It's good yellow-green transition, classic on Necrons. Uh, you know, all that sells for me. I don't have any issue with that. I think you actually did a really good job on all of the OSL. Um, he looks actually quite bright and new, so, I mean, if that's what you were going for, then I think it was successful. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my general feedback is the king himself gets somewhat lost amongst this because it, it, the, the throne itself is all silver and he's all silver and there's all this bright stuff happening around him and you know <coughs> with vehicles with with human shapes we always talk about drawing the attention to the face and that you want to create the light the the vision lines moving toward the face and then you know around um and you know with a with a big vehicle it can often be a challenge and this guy's basically a diorama my recommendation here would be if you were going to have a, a separate color in here or something or make him, you know, if you were going to, if you darkened down the whole throne but kept him super shiny, stuff like that would help to make him stand out a little more. Because, you know, when I zoom back out to like my sort of maximum view here, you know, he's, he gets lost in the mix of all this, right? Because he's effectively the same color, same palette, nothing stands out and there's plenty of green everywhere, right? In fact, the most eye-catching thing on the base is the the captured Satan or whatever, right? So, um, just a just a thought there for general advice going forward. Hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Ringo. Uh, so basically, you know about the Sentinel feedback on the rust streaks, maybe the concrete ground. Sure. So the streaks need to be longer and thinner and more broken up. Um, I think placement-wise, they're they're fine. They should come from bolts open places anywhere where water would naturally collect build and then streak right um tall flat surfaces but they need to be longer thinner i have a video on making streaks i would highly recommend you go watch it i have multiple streaking videos actually one on oils and one on uh acrylics and, and stuff like that so go check those out um but it's you know they need to be they need to look like they're it's multi streaks don't happen in one rainstorm okay 
They happen when water collects, spills, dries, 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 collects, spills, dries. Repeat a hundred more times. Right. Um, they're the they're the wear of time. And so they need to look like and in each time, it's like the scene in Jurassic Park when when he puts the drop of water on her hand, right? Each time it's gonna fall slightly differently, streak slightly differently. So it's about building up those little incremental layers of sort of streaking and they need to be sort of long and thin and then it, you have a fuzzed out wider area where the water sort of seeped out and then left thinner amounts of detritus where it wasn't being carried directly down. Now, as to the the concrete ground, um, it's okay. It looks basically like cork, uh, not like concrete. Um, but actually what I would say is, but I, it, it's fine enough you know like for for a piece or whatever but my my like concrete should generally be more like at, at this scale you wouldn't actually see much of the texture in concrete it would be it would look more like very high grit sandpaper okay um and in fact that can actually be something you use to make concrete you can go get very high grit sandpaper cut it to size put it on something it'll look like concrete if painted appropriately it will shred brushes up, so make sure you use junk brushes. But that's a, just a tip for making concrete on it, something like this. Anyways, the the one thing that jumps out to me here on the base is actually not the concrete. It's this thing. Um, I get what you were going for. You wanted him to be, like, stomping over a thing. But it doesn't work. And the reason is because you never put a giant thing that blocks vision in front of your miniature. Okay? Uh... It, you should, like, if this was moved here, let me make this more real for you. If that was moved here, okay, so it was, like, behind his legs, I would love it. I would be all about it, because then it's a backdrop. It could still be falling or on the ground. Like, he pushed it down when he stepped over it, right? Great, fantastic. We can tell the same story, but then we're not blocking the view of the miniature. So, that's just a general note. Uh, so, there you go, Ringo. Hope that helps. Okay. Next up, uh, Alexander, uh, finish this big robot for my Infinity. First Mar Mini with Chimera. Would love to look at, you just basically love some general feedback. So contrast, contrast, contrast is the name of the game here. We don't have enough tonal variation. The red is too flat, especially on the gun. The gun itself is too flat. The, I don't mind this sort of like the volume you've got here on the arm, but then we're going to need, if, if it's this, if this is what's going on. So what you're communicating through this highlight is something that is glossy black okay that's what you're trying to communicate by a small quick shift to white so if that's the case then you would also see a uh you would also see reflective shadows on the bottom so it wouldn't just be one line of light from above anything that glossy like a black car or something is going to be uh, also reflecting on the bottom and showing other lights. Like, it, glossy black is actually one of the most uh, complicated things you can paint, um, period. Uh, because it's... Um, because it's going to... Because it has... It's going gonna, it's gonna to reflect all of the world around it, Okay. So, the, the broader a highlight, the more matte a surface. What I mean by that is, if you have broad, soft highlights, that's actually quite a matte surface. If you have thin, sharp, kicking highlights that, go, that run the whole gamut up to white, that represents a glossy surface. But a glossy surface isn't just reflective in the light, it's reflective to everything, right? So, like, when you hold up something metallic, it's going to, and I move it around, it creates lots of different reflections and shine points and things like that all around and the colors from everything in the area. If you had something that big, there'd be light coming on the bottom of the, 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 the arm. You know, down here, there'd be reflective lights. There'd be all this stuff going on. Like, at, at minimum, you would need a bounce light reflection on the bottom. So that's the number one thing that jumps out at me. There you go. I hope that helps, Alexander. Okay, next up, Bill Clark uh, talking about his Tau. Uh, could really use advice as it's on this. It was his first time doing it. Uh, this little di this diorama. 
Uh, I love this bill, is my short answer for you. Yeah, I think it totally works. Um, the sparks flying are freaking fantastic. Um, love the damaged towel reaching out to the little girl. Like, what a wonderful story. His little drone fixing him. Uh, the shading and the minor scratching and the wear around him is great. He's standing in this sort of whopper-jawed position, which I really love. Makes him feel more damaged. Like, even your placement of the figure, like having him kind of down in this with his legs splayed and, like, hunched makes him feel weaker, which is, you know, kind of the situation he's in, right? He's gotten beat up. Um, the scratching is very dynamic. There's lots of different sizes of scratches. His <laughs> feet are nice and pigmenty that shows he's, you know, been around. Uh, yeah, I, I really like this piece. It's it's a very flat piece as far as, like, your colors go. You, you mainly let OSL be your variation of color, which, by the way, is not bad. I'm not, that's, and any, I quite like that, actually. My point was just saying that, like, a lot of the, the piece itself is the same color, and then you're using all the different glows to kind of create the, the, the color changes on it. I think that actually works quite great. Um, so, yeah, this is a, a really wonderful, wonderful piece, man. I, I enjoyed the heck out of this. Um, I mean, you could refine it more, right? Like, it could have some... some it could have a little more clean volumetric highlighting in some places. Uh, you know, like individual elements could be maybe more clearly and cleanly picked out. Because it's, it's, some of it is all kind of drifting together, pulled up by the battle damage. But again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. But like some of the elements could use a little more distinction, like around his, I don't know, whatever this piece is, these wing things that they have. I don't, I don't know Tao stuff. Um, but this is fantastic. I love the diorama. I love the the piece. I think it's it's a really great job. So yeah, wonderful. I love the idea of him landing on this industrial playground and trying to fix up and making friends with this little girl. Like what a what a wonderful story. Absolutely great. Okay, next up, uh, Alex. Uh, yeah, your big night. It does look familiar, Alex. Uh, okay, uh, practice your freehand, but I'd like to know if it works in this contest. Uh, do the rest of the colors work, etc. Yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, Alex, I think this works quite well. Um, so just a couple notes. Does the free hand work? Um, yes, I think the eagle or the aquila, 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 whatever, should be a little bigger. Um, you, like, to, to take up a little bit more negative space. It's not too teeny tiny, but it could be stretched out. Like, I'd plus 20% that or 10% that, somewhere in that range. It's not terribly off, it's just a little off. Um, the checker pattern works. Uh, the And actually, that's kind of a universal challenge we've got in most of the places. This one is a little too small. This isn't taking up enough, as much, enough of the negative space, and the one on the back right shoulder isn't taking up enough space. When you're, when you're putting freehand into one of these elements, you kind of need to use the space. And so, like, to return to this one, this is fine, this thing, but then we need something else in here to really, like, create the space okay um what i mean by that is like more flowers over here on the side or maybe you put some imperial numbers just like a decal right here and you know just just kind of to break up that space when you fill part of it with freehand and then not the rest it stands out if that was all just white it would look different it would have a different feeling right so when you're when you're gonna put in that freehand it needs to make sure you fill up the whole space um yeah, so that's just my quick thoughts there. I think the roses work and look nice. Does the blue visor work? Yeah, it works fine. I mean, it's you don't have a lot of other blue, but that's actually okay in this event. So um, with one of the tricks with things like this is you do need to draw attention to the face, and it can get lost in a you know, mess of freehand and everything else going on. And um, the reality is is that this... Uh, like, that blue glow does help draw attention back to the face. Even though it's not balanced, it's okay because it's where you kind of want it to be, but it's also not overwhelming. You didn't do it like punchy, punchy, super blue. It's just this soft blue haze. So yeah, it, it works okay. Um, it doesn't really feel like a blue glow very much because I don't have anything inside really brightly glowing. It's getting lost in the heavy shadow, which is tough. Like I'm sure if I looked at him in person, I would bet you did light blue the eyes. It's just getting lost in probably the lighting of how you're taking this photo. Like this cat, you took the light, you put a light up here, and you didn't put a light down here by his face, and so I'm. It's getting cut off. So I'll assume in real life you did the right stuff there. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's kind of my thoughts. I hope that helps. Uh, good stuff, Alex. 
Okay, next up, Patrick. Uh, where he's at with painting vehicles, where could he improve? The weathering's a bit dodgy. How would he play more with light? Yeah, I mean, yes, it definitely needs to be playing more with light. We also need to be playing more with separating the individual elements. So by that I mean, uh, so not only do we need more volumetric highlighting of separating the, the various panels and creating some kind of, of light structure on them, um, you know, there are some people who are real diehards for particular types of volumetric lighting with armor. Like, it has to be this top of the panel that's dark, or the bottom of the panel that's dark, or the outer edge of the panel that's dark. And, like, there are people who really get up in arms about this. I'm not one of them. I think that's all a lot of hoobajube. Um, you could do it however you want, okay? It's a question of what you're looking for as far as... It, it's art, folks. So it's what you're trying to communicate. But it does need to be there because it, it is what communicates shape, right, on something like this. So... Um, yeah, that's, that's the number one thing I see. More dark lines around the individual elements, more edging picking out of the, of the individual elements. So things like the, uh, this, uh, whatever, the hatches and these little rims and stuff like that. I would also look at integrating some other types of material. So put in some metals or some other types of color. I know tanks were often painted over with everything. That's fine. Still try to break it up some because just a little bit of different elements just visually breaks up the experience regardless of sort of quote-unquote realism. Um, the numbering and the coloring is fine. I don't think the weathering got squirrely. The weather, like this looks like an extremely weathered thing. Um, but you got a lot of different takes of like sponges and what looks like weapon hits. And you do have the little dots on the edges where you clearly sponge weathered. And then you went back in and built up some in larger areas. Um, the only part that doesn't quite work is this little piece here and this little piece here. We kind of jump to orange a little too much. Go back in and just dot some some brown in that so it's not just this huge orange area. Like, you shouldn't have an orange thing. It should be stipples and dots and things like that. But, like, this piece here and up here and all this, that'll work for me. I got no issue with any of that. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. Hope that helps, Patrick. Okay, next up, we've got Justin, uh, first 40K model. Uh, decided to be a little bit reserved, uh, heavy handed on the shading, uh, tried to darken some panels for the body shadows. I'm looking at tips on how to clean up the metal, making it more realistic. Yeah. I mean, my answer is it actually isn't shaded enough. Um, well, first of all, we've got like a way too direct of a light on here. Like if you can see a shadow, your light is too direct. So number one, we got to work on photos, Justin. Um, we've got to make it so we've actually got like, you want a soft diffuse light and, and making a soft diffuse light. You're like, but I don't know how to make that. Yes, you do. You have a piece of white paper. You put it in front of a light. That diffuses the light, right? So it's, the light goes here. That diffuses the light. It's that easy. Okay, you can use paper. You can use wax paper. You can use tissue paper. You can roll some paper, grab some paper towels, and, and put a couple layers of it in front. You just need to, you need to diffuse out the light. Okay, so now, but there's actually not enough shading on him, is my answer. Um, like, the gold is flat, the silver's flat, everything's kind of flat honestly and i'll be honest with you when you're when you're working with a vehicle an airbrush to get the shading down is, is really almost an essential tool if you're going to work in especially metallics um because you need to be able to more easily you don't want to use washes and stuff like that you want to create angular volumetric lights so like if you go and watch my videos on panel modulation you'll see exactly what i'm talking about okay because that's what's lacking here the top of the silver carapace is basically just one flat dull silver all the way up no shadows no light being caught that's my issue same basically with the gold same basically with the red right we're not getting enough distinction here uh so that's i think would be my number one thing i would uh push you on there and do like again go watch the panel modulation video and that'll really uh, help you out there okay next up uh rick uh so basically looking for uh weathering the wear on the armor stuff like that sure so let's let's go around to be aware here you go where we can see kind of all this so this is where we're going to get to the problem of airbrush osl it feels like airbrush osl because there's no more distinction you can't strike a light without creating a shadow this is my problem with airbrush osl it just blasts the whole area with with color and that isn't really how light works okay so, I mean, I've done this before, but I'll do it again, right? Look at my hand with the lights that are, that are above it, okay? Do you see how that didn't instantly fill the entire hand with light? Look at the shadows that are still there, okay? Like, 
you cannot strike a match without creating a shadow. So, see how the... The shadows from above my hand are still dark. I didn't light these up, right? Only what's very near the source. And then even then, other shadows got deeper, okay? So, the point is, on things like guns and stuff like this, you have to have the dark lines, the edges. To sell the glow, there has to be things that aren't covered. There has to be dark lines that aren't in the shadow, stuff like that. It's the same for the, the back of this guy. Like, this doesn't feel like what the blue glow would actually feel like. It's just a big splot of blue. That's not light. Light has a fade to it, right? There's an intensity. It goes the brightest and then softer, and then there's a dark line, and then this soft halo around it, right? Now, as to the yellow armor itself, um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Uh, the I think some of the, the chipping and stuff could focus more toward the edges, and sort of toward the logical consist places of where it would be happening. I do like that you focus on the feet. That feels right to me. Um, so I think that's good. That's a good application. The sort of the brown you're choosing to use there feels okay. Um, you do want to probably create some variance in there, areas of slight more darkness and things like that. Um, and the yellow itself overall does feel flat before the weathering. I'd love to see more contrast in the yellow before we get to the weathering stage. So... There you go. Those are my thoughts, Rick. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Philip. Uh, so, talks about how last month I talked about more color in the bases uh, and, you know, very desaturated and stuff like that. I think this came out great. Um, this guy looks really nice. What a wonderful, like, really, really old, worn robot. Um, see previous comment I made about crap on the front of your miniature. This is wrong. Don't do this. Like, I can't see that whole miniature. Right? I should the proper viewing angle for the miniature should never have an obstructed view. It's that easy. Okay? If it was behind him, again, fine. And and again, I get it. I I know people want to be like, we want to have our big robots stomping things down. Great, then knock it all the way down. If it's this big and his foot's on top of it, completely different image, right? Because then I can still see the whole mini. Right? So if he's stomping forward and he's literally like crushed it down great <laughs> no issue okay now as to like the the colors that's a very neat reference by the way i love this this is his reference picture drawn from real life for the desaturated colors fantastic this is so good i love this kind of stuff uh and i think he did a great job at recreating it the uh white feels very old and worn the that turquoise looks exactly like that super old turquoise would look like um, one thing I would say is do mix up your rusty brown a little more. I know in your reference picture it wasn't, but when we shrink it down to this size, you do want to create it. We, this is where art needs to come in over a little bit of realism. So we need a little more color variation in there of yellow rust, magenta rust, red rust, orange rust. I don't care what type of rust, but like, you know, you need to get a little more splash of color in there um, in a stippled fashion so it looks a little more uh, visually compelling and, and creates a little more value variation. Okay. But yeah, great job. And cool, cool way to use the reference picture. All right, Pedro. Uh, so basically looking, uh, tried panel shading for the first time and thin edge highlighting. Any tips are appreciated. Yeah, so he's, as he mentions, this is one of his first vehicles. Um, I think he did a fine job on it here. Uh, I think you want to, you want to, so this is one of the things I see with these dreadnoughts a lot is that people really like go nuts on this front, these front two shoulders. I don't know what it is about them. They always make them super dark. But you have to be consistent. So what I mean here is these two are darker than this. And that's just not right. Right? It still needs to heed the light. So yes, you can shade up toward the top, but it needs to walk a reasonable gradient. And one of the hardest parts about panel modulation as you get going is testing what the reasonable gradient is. You know, same here on this arm because it's a it's a uh, cylinder shape, the shadow is actually going to fall on the bottom. So what I'm noticing here is we don't have enough, we just don't have enough tonal variation. We got to push it farther on the, on some of the panels, like the, the uh, cylinder style panels, and we've got to wheel back the shadow and increase the highlight on the flat panels. It's a tough thing to balance. As you said, this was your first vehicle. For your first vehicle, I think this is a good job. I think the edges are nice and thin. I think you did a good job on that. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of, you know, continuing to play with that panel modulation. Again, check out that video that I 
re previously referenced. That'll kind of walk you through the, the steps of it. And, uh, and there you go. All right, next up, Chris. Uh, and yes, this is certainly in the spirit of things. Uh, the little bit of wolf pelt on his face wolf thing is not enough. So number one thing that jumps out to me here right out of the gate is just the level of contrast. We don't have enough of it anywhere. I mean, that's, that's more or less where I'd stop and start. Um, you don't have to give me, you know, damage and weathering all over the place. I wouldn't mind if you did. You certainly could. But the metal on the bottom of the grav tank is too flat. The blue, the baby blue is too flat. None of the, the, so none of the panels, there's no modulation. None of the missiles, none of the yellow, which is a flat matte color. The metals, like, there is just no tonal variation here whatsoever. And, uh, and that's a problem, right? We also don't have the edges really struck out in any way. Um, we need to incorporate the, both of those elements. It'd be the number one thing I'd give you feedback on. So pretty much that simple. Like, again, see panel modulation video, and that will be your home. Uh, okay, next up, uh, Travers. And Travers, I am so glad to see you back, my man. Uh, I, I read this post, and I just want to be the first to say, well done, brother. Wet is what I wanted. So I, I want to take a moment to just talk about Travers here. In January... He had painted something he was very proud of. It didn't do as well as he wanted in the competition, and he was feeling really down. And look, I've been there. Like I said at the time, I lose way more than I win in competitions, okay? Uh, and so, and it hurts. But what you got to do is you got to take that, that hurt, and you got to make it light a fire in you to keep going, okay? Like, perseverance breeds success, be the crucible of victory, okay? And that's exactly what Travers did. He came back, he went, he, do he drove into this project, he took it, as, you know, to a high level, to where he felt like he could go, and he entered this into his second painting contest, and he won. And I'm so happy for you, man. That's, congratulations, that's great stuff. Now, what do we do with this guy? So where are we at? Okay, so I think this guy looks really nice. He did a good job. We need to smooth out some of the shading on the metals, um, so stuff like this in here, in here, in here. Keep pushing on that. Look to smooth those things out. Great place to use your airbrush in a soft way. You just kind of coat around it. The weathering, uh, I like some of the streaking here. Again, but let's make it a little more organic. Have a little more running down in a light fashion, say, out of these panels down here coming down. And then make these thinner and have, again, more streaky lines and variants of the color. Uh, stuff like that. Um and then overall, we need to create a little more contrast in the highlight of the metals uh, and things like that. Like, you need to pop up some of the highlights on those, create reflection points, points of light on those true metals. Um, and then probably your next place to go would be to really, like, focus and tell a story through battle damage. This is a big Admech Knight. He's, you know, you've got rusts and chips. So let's now get those telling a better story. Um, you know, having the chips and things down by the legs. I do like how you're taking some of the decals and weathering them over and streaking them over. That's good. That makes them feel much more realistic and part of the vehicle. Keep going with that. Keep pushing yourself. Um, watch the video I have on uh, battle damage rust streaking. It's like in the 90s somewhere. Hobby cheating in the 90s somewhere. That really focuses in on, I'm actually doing it on a night at that point, And that'll actually take you through kind of, you know, where you want to be. But this is great work. Keep pushing, Travers, and I'm, I'm very happy for you. All right, next up, uh, Carl's. Uh, so basically, he said it's his first attempt at approaching each panel as an individual gradient and this much weathering. So gradients and weathering. So gradient-wise, again, yeah, probably doing better. We need to push a little more shadows on the ones that are completely hidden from the light. So, like, it doesn't, you're, you're still thinking, like, okay, this panel has this much space, so I'm going to go my light for 80% and my dark for 20. And this panel has this much space, so my light for 80% and my dark for 20. That's not how it works. There's still a total volume, right? So, this whole undercarriage here should have, like, this piece should be heavier shadowed than these. These should need shadows, but this should be more in shadow. This should be more in shadow, right? Okay. So, um, so that's my first thought. I don't love this silver sponge weathering. I think it generally looks terrible. Uh, I mean, it's just, that's not how things would look when they're chipped. Unless it just got chipped five seconds ago. Like, that metal has not been treated and will rust and dull basically the next time that thing is outside. 
Um, I mean, how often do you see cars with their enamel chipped away and bright silver underneath? You don't. You see brown and rust. Why? Because it takes, like, a few days for that to happen. Okay? And even if it were, you were going to use metals, it would be, like, dull. Dull gray. I'd actually use gray to do it. Maybe, like, a very dark metal. Because, again, that hasn't been polished. It's not polished silver down there that's sitting under enamel paint. It's, you know, steel. It's just like, or whatever this is, futuranium, right? Like, it's not a polished metal. So, um, I don't generally like that. The other thing I notice on your battle damage is you have what I call same size syndrome. Okay? And that is when this chip is the same size, and this chip is the same size, and this chip is the same size. All right? And so on. You made them too regular because your brain wanted them to be regular. Like a human being, you tried to be like, this is the chip, and 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 this is the chip. I literally teach a class where before I tell, I, I tell people we're going to do this type of weathering, and I say, your brain is going to want to make these all the same size. And I'm going to tell you right now not to do it. And I'm going to tell you that, and it doesn't matter, 80% of you are still going to do it. And I tell them straight to their face that 80% of them are going to screw up the exercise that we're about to do. I show them how to do it the right way. And then 80% of them screw it up every time. Because human brains want these things to be symmetrical. We like symmetry. Our, it's just what we enjoy. And you've got to stop that. you got to get in there and, you know, stop that, punch that, that your, your conscious symmetry loving brain in the face. Uh, those need to be different size and varied and focused, right? So... You ask, like, how do you stop yourself with a weathering? Well, first of all, you have too much sponging. And again, it needs to be location-based. When you're thinking about where does weathering happen, every piece of weathering needs to tell a story. Why is this like this? And if you force yourself to tell a story with every time, you won't go nuts, right? So why are the legs all messed up? Well, because it's a robot and it walks around and it kicks things and its feet are all damaged and stuff like that because that's what happens. For the same reason your car tires are dirty, right? Uh, because they're what connects with the road, right? And those aren't exactly weapons of war. The upper area should be more focused on things like bullet damage or battle damage of that type, right? Where their people are shooting at it, trying to kill its, its driver or whatever, yeah? So find the narrative, and that will help you control, okay? All right, next up, Rowan. Uh, so talking about tips on placement when it comes to weathering on larger panels, yeah. So let's go out to the, the full view on this guy. Here we go. So the number one thing I've got on this guy, Rowan, is, is just contrast. We don't have enough of it. Like, that's the first thing that jumped out at me. We needed to we needed more volumetric highlighting him. Now, how do we weather big upper plates? It's the same rule I just said. Every piece needs to tell a story. And the way it tells a story is, again, things near the bottom tend to be scratched from incidental exposure. Drive near a building, kick near a building, long scratches, hits, impacts of like where it kicked something, where it scratched something, where something scratched at it, claw marks from smaller things that are that are scraping at it as it steps on them, that kind of stuff. Upper areas, bullet damage, impact damage, flash plasma, streaking, you know, chips and weathers around uh, rivets where the paint has pulled away because of water that seeped in. That's the kind of stuff that happens on upper areas of, of robots, right? So... Um, when you start telling a story behind each scratch that goes on the miniature, right, then you force yourself to think, why is this like this? And that will help you place them correctly. So hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Liam, uh, basically looking for feedback on the murals, uh, and, uh, a lot of effort into weathering and that kind of stuff. Sure. So uh, let's talk about the murals first off. So we'll just kind of zoom through the pictures here so we can see everything. Um, my honest answer is I think the murals look pretty good. Again, you're right. Like some of them aren't perfect as far as size goes. Like you can tell this is not equal to that. So you want to be careful with stuff like that. You can use things like um, decals and stencils and stuff if you want to really nail them. But it also just means you got to go back and, and fix it as you're working on it, right? Um, it's It can be tough to do really symmetrical uh, designs like this with freehanded, but I think they look good. Like, don't get me wrong, they're they're nice. You did a good job with them. Um, you can also use rulers and mark out your spot. Like, you can use a little a little ruler and actually like straight edge out your stuff and just in pencil on there first. 
and then just paint over it or erase it. Like, as long as it's varnished first, you won't hurt anything. Okay? So, now, as to the damage and weathering, yeah, feels pretty good. Feels pretty organic. Looks like scratched in most of the places I would expect it to be. Along edges, especially lower edges, is where I'm seeing most of the heavy chipping. Um, we could have the rivets picked out a little more. Uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, but on the whole, the, the dust, the patina along the bottom, that sells to me. Feels like a sort of sandy desert that very much sells to me i have no issue with that don't love the sticks in front of the tank but okay yeah i mean i think that the panel modulation is good you're just about in the right place we could use a little bit stronger edges being picked out in a few locations um like some of the edges aren't quite as crisp as i would want them to be or or, or as really called out especially like the upper facing edges on the top sides of the tank feel like they need to be a little brighter because they feel about the same color as like some of the sides and lower edges. But yeah, I like the weathering. I think you did a good job with it. This is a really nice tank. I think you did great. So yeah, just refinement, I'd say, is really your, your challenge there, Liam. All right, next up. Uh, so this big model. <laughs> it's a, what is this thing called? Mag Magariba? Magrib? I don't know how to say this thing. Um, it's from Infinity. So... Um, so, uh, you know, saying, like, how do we get the contrast? How do we get the weathering? Sure. So, I mean, first of all, if we're going to take a picture, by the way, let's take a picture. Don't just shoot it on your painting desk under your painting light. Please take me a proper picture. So, number one, if you're going to submit, give me a proper picture. If, you're, if I'm going to take my time to review it, you can take the time to take a proper photo. Uh, number one. So, number two. Yes, you're right. It is too flat. And, and ultimately, again, it has to do with that volumetric highlighting. So, again, go check out, like, the panel modulation video because we need, like, the areas to, of the, along the sides and the sides of these, like, let's just take this leg in microcosm. The sides of these panels toward the top here and here should be darker, should have some shading. The lower part of this middle panel up top here, or the, sorry, the upper part here should be lighter, right? Because that's it's at this kind of an angle, so the light's going to naturally capture up here, right? Just like you can see my arm right now lighter to darker right okay um edges need to be a little more cleanly picked out we need stronger separation of the element as far as like the elements as far as like panel lines and stuff like that goes it doesn't really feel very battle damaged in most cases so i mean it, it honestly doesn't like you have to keep you have to paint really clean to then battle damage thing and so um make sure you're keeping everything nice and uh you know get those edges picked out and those clean lines those deep recess shadows and and, and the the volumetric highlighting and then you can get to, to to damage and stuff like that and again focus it like i said in the previous feedback so i hope that all helps uh, again check out the panel modulation video check out the battle damage video in the 90s that'll that'll help okay next up uh dan with the one that's pushing it the most for this but again out of everybody's this is definitely the one pushing it the most because this is a guy in a sled but we'll allow it, even though I said no flesh. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll allow this since it is technically a vehicle. Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest... I, I understand what you said about contrast, and that's fine. I get the Grimdark style pull, but that can often be... A, like, okay, Grimdark shouldn't be an excuse for, like, I didn't do the necessary. So, like, the wolves are very flat and boring, and there's no reason why they should be, right? They're still creatures with fur. So they should still have tonal variation in their fur um like that's number one number two if you're going for that sort of a style then you still have to make sure the appropriate areas are visually interesting which means like his face and stuff like that and his face kind of gets lost in all of here so if i was going to focus anything it'd be around like you you've got a lot of areas of interest that are catching light and again this is a, like bad lighting for a photo you have it under a spotlight or something i don't know why that is like again shoot light should be directly from diffuse light should be at the miniature from the angle you're taking the picture so if I'm, you know, like, basically, if this is where I'm looking at, there should be, like, lights coming in like this in a diffuse fashion. Not, we don't, not under a spotlight, okay? So, um, but, you know, we want to see, like, things like the face and stuff picked out more. These kind of elements, you can have that grim dark stuff. You can have the sort of grim dark feeling. Um, like, I don't have any problem with the, the, his sled being, you know, very weathered and stuff like that. That's fine. That's no issue. Um, but then we still need to make sure that he's the most visually interesting thing in the piece because he is the center point, right? 
So more highlighting on his face, more like shading down of other elements and like picking out that halo of light around him would really help. So there you go. Hope that helps, Dan. All right, next up, Jim. Uh, okay, uh, so a couple notes here. So this is his 13th mini, and he said, you know, wanted to look how he was thinking, of, like as it stands, his display quality. All right, first thing I'll say, you shouldn't be worrying about a display quality miniature on your 13th miniature. Just don't don't put yourself to that standard. That's not relevant at this point, okay? Like, you should, you should be worrying about display quality painting on, like, your 100th miniature, your 500th or 1,000th, okay? Like... There's still fundamentals you want to make sure you're mastering before you're worrying about that kind of crap. So, like, focus on the techniques, not that. Now, what's here? Okay, so the green and stuff looks good. The red glow of the plasma looks good. Um, basing color variation, no issue with that. Good, good cast of pigment and red up into the feet. I'm with that. All that is is good to me. Some of the scratches and stuff on the uh, the white that all sells. Biggest problem is anything gold or metal on here is very flat, very boring. Okay, also we've got to get like more light into this picture. Um, this guy feels like he was lit by a light, by a, uh, a flashlight from across the room. Um, but these metals and the golds are really flat. That's where we lack the variation right now. So when, again, as I've said on these things, when we put true metals on vehicles, which we often use true metals on vehicles, they're not a common place that you go non-metallic metal, and that's fine. The scale modeling has a long tradition of using real metallics. And that's why one of the reasons I love it. But then we've still got to bring that volumetric highlighting, that shading into them, right? So like this gold is all just flat. Same here, this metal is all just flat. So we still need to create that light and shadow on it and that sort of create those kind of NMM style techniques in the metal. That's the biggest thing that jumped out at me. Uh, overall, I mean, for 13th Mini, again, looks absolutely fantastic. So if I was you, next Mini, let's focus in on some on some shading and highlighting metals. Okay, next up, uh, TJ uh, wanted to work on weathering techniques and setting up good transitions, use pigments for the first time along with oil washes. Yeah, so I looked at this guy and I, people have some real problems photographing vehicles is what I got from this month. Again, way too direct of a light, way too hot, way too non-diffuse, right? So, but anyways, um, yeah, I mean, we don't have enough tonal variation in the red. All the red is very flat. It's very much the same color. Um, you need, we need to make sure that there's much more variation in the individual panels there. So with things like this, this sort of chaos brocade pattern, like hell drakes and these kind of creatures, you want to make sure that you've got a general color transition going over the volume of the thing. And then you go back in with the metals, right? And then you need to match that transition on your metals. Uh, so it can be quite a complicated process, but that's really the number one thing that jumps out at me. The plasma glow on the guns looks fine. The flesh, I believe, and the little, you know, the pigment and stuff. Pigments came out great. No issue there. You, you're, you're using them just fine. They're, they're quite heavy, but the ground looks like it's quite muddy and heavy, so I don't have a problem with that. You might want to, when you're doing it, though, that heavy here, you've got to draw it lightly up the rest of the leg. That's the only thing I noticed. Like, I don't have a problem with heavy, dirty, muddy feet, but then there's got to be a very light amount of it. So, like, if this is the foot and it's super heavy, it's got to lightly come up to here. Like, the more you apply it here, the farther up it needs to creep. Right? There's a sort of like mathematical equation to it, right? If it's lightly dusty here, it stops low because that means it hasn't gone up. If it's if it's really thick and all over the place, then it's kicked up a lot and it has to go everywhere. So there you go. All right, next up, Daniel uh, with his Vendetta restored. Uh, goal is a nice tabletop standard. I feel it's not there yet. Yes, you are. Okay, next. Anyways, all right. I hope that helps, Daniel. No, I'm just joking. No, it's great, man. You, what are you talking about? You're definitely at a tabletop standard, buddy. Now, it doesn't mean we can't go farther, but, like, tabletop? Yeah, man, you're there. It's fine. This is this is quite good. Um, now, what do we need to work on? And by the way, yeah, I love the freehand Aquila on the wings. I think that came out really fantastic. So, I no issue to me, brother. Um, panel modulation is good. Um, edges are could use some more work. Um, picking out of the individual elements, variation around things like catching light on the edges. So let's go back to, sorry, to this one right here. Um, things like this front edge of the vehicle and edges along here, a little bit more of that. We could do a little bit more weathering and those kinds of things. And then on the metals, we can vary those a little more with, again, a little more like volumetric highlighting on the metals, making those a little more visually interesting. The metals is where I would go if I was going to push this along with a little bit of the edges. But this is great, man. Red glow really sells. 
Free hand on the wings looks good. Panel modulation is nice. It's great for a rescue. This is fantastic. For tabletop, it's absolutely wonderful, man. I don't know. Yeah, so well done. Okay, next up, uh, Voltron uh, wanted to push himself and use mostly oil paints to build an anime comic book stylized NMM. Yeah, so one of the things when you're doing this is you can't, when, when you're doing this sort of thing, there has to be some connection between the panels. So it actually, like, if you look at, like, Voltron in this style, it isn't each panel picked out quite like this. It's more of, like, this sheen, this sort of, it's hard to explain. There's a general volumetric lighting that creates a, a, a like a light that creates these light shears across the mini, and then the individual panels have lesser versions of that. So in other words, like you'd have the bright line across here, which is good. This is correct how you've tied this together, but then we need to come up not that high on the other panels, okay? Or like not that high on this panel and this panel, but then this one would come up as high. So it's moving across in these like. That comic book style is like as they turn, they the animator's moving these two lines of light and shadow across the miniature, and it creates this illusion of movement, right? So it's like we all we all remember the Voltron crew. It's like, you know, they like turn and spin the sword or whatever, right? And all they're actually doing is just moving like lines of light and dark up and down the animated cells, and that's making it look like it's highly reflective. So you've got to have it can't be each individual panel. It's got to be these broad spaces and then lesser ones in the individual panels um also keep your black lines like really sharp really thin and then you can work in the scratches and stuff that's fine uh, but overall i think this is cool like i think the face is the most successful um because again it feels more like it's not each individual little panel but more of the volume of the thing that you accurately captured so i think this part really works for me so yeah hope that helps okay all right, next up, uh, Austin uh, started up. This is his uh, Dreadnought. What can he do to push this model beyond high tabletop? So I think you're already there. Um, good panel modulation. Uh, looks like the edges are well picked out. I mean, I think we could push it a little farther. What it actually looks like is things like contrast on the gold, the green, the other elements, having the, this needs to have like letters on it. Like the red of the main body looks fine to me the detail elements are not as good right so like things like the fist need to be picked out cleaner the edge highlights need to be sharper the pan the the, the uh, tonal variation on the gun and the other elements those need to be higher the metals need to have the same tonal variation that you've done here like there's more tonal variation in your red than in your steel that's a problem right that red is not as shiny as that steel same with the gold like gold very flat very very flat right the the weapon very very flat so those are the kind of things you you've got we've got to take all the elements up to the same level as the red armor okay uh so that is my advice if you wanted to push yourself all right next up uh rich with his uh with again a dreadnought uh tried to make it feel like it was telling a story need to know if it's coherent how's the weathering and grind feel any other tips sure so it feels uh, again, so my first piece is it does feel flat. Same thing as I had said before, right? Like there's not enough um, tonal variation and panel modulation across the thing, uh, especially when you're using like really deep colors like this. Like it's fine, but then there's got to be something that's visually interesting here in this entire thing. Like the base and everything is really, really, really neutral and washed out. Uh, and so that's problematic. Like the ground and the base itself doesn't have near enough variation on it. The yellow part doesn't have enough variation and then the, and the what would we call that i don't know brown plummy color doesn't have enough variation on it now as to the weathering i think the weathering's fine i think it actually looks quite good if we had actual the tonal variation on the panels i think we'd really have something great there um again i'm not so sure about chipping away from metal i know you're doing that because this is the dark but see the problem is that's weird because here you've chipped away and it's gone brown and here we've chipped away and it's gone steel now i know over on this side where's that yeah, here we go. On this side, you brought back in the steel. I can't really see it, but you have steel over here on this yellow, but not on this one. Again, don't make it shiny, reflective silver. That's just not how it looks. When you have dark colors and they scratch away, yeah, you just don't tend to see it as much. Okay? So, I mean, that's part of the problem of having a dark vehicle. That's when you have dark vehicles, they don't show rust as much, right? Uh, but making it look bright silver, just to make it contrast, doesn't actually make it look real. It just makes it look worse. 
Um, so if you're going to chip like that, chip it away and make it either like a dull steel or uh, chip away to a lighter color of brown or gray or something that's like the prime runner that's chipping away to the Bondo or whatever, you know, or whatever, you know, so it's something that's under there. Okay, that can be a way you can tackle that problem. Um, and then you could use the same chipping on the yellow parts because it would also then stand out. Now, but most of it should be rusted. It should be just like a brown, and then you can tackle that by bringing in other rust colors. Again, magentas, reds, oranges, yellows, all those things are natural rust colors. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that, that jumps out at me. Did I hit all your questions? Oh, the narrative. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's... The narrative's fine. I, I love him picking up this thing. I think that worked out really well. Um, again, you're blocking the miniature in the front. I don't love that. Again, move it to the side, and we've got something like he should be in the middle of this with those two things framing him in a V, the, like this hunk of junk here, and then this thing flying out in a V onto his side, and we've got an absolute winner of composite composition. All right, next up, Chris. Uh, looking for sharing more projects. Tried some new techniques to me, directional lighting, shading, metallics, water effects. Sure. So, the, first of all, the water effect looks really nice. I'll start there. Um, the general directional lighting, I don't know if I really feel it. <coughs> the metallics aren't shaded, by the way, in a way that I would really recommend. They look washed. And uh, that's not really how we want to shade metallics. So, my recommendation would be watch my How to Shade True Metallic Metals in a Non-Metallic Metal style. That's going to give you a more volumetric shading on your metals. But it's, you know, it's... Like, they feel washed over and grimy, but not in the right way. Like, some of the wash captured around this stuff, and then it doesn't look cleaned up. It doesn't look like the metal's dirty. It just looks like there is a wash on it. Um, so, and when it comes to things like this big globe on his spider butt, again, if we're going to do volumetric lighting, we've got to have it be a lot more, like, actually volumetric. And this is probably one of the better areas, because this does feel slightly lighter than this, but I think we could push that contrast farther, and then we need to carry that into the metals. Okay, so that's what I would encourage you to do. But yeah, cool piece. Uh, hope that helps. All right, Gabriel uh, with his tank. Uh, first attempt at a scale tank, uh, modeler style vehicle. First chipping layer was meant to be lighter, more saturated. The decals are freehanded, and some of the details are missing nice dark lines. Uh, here's what I'll say. If you think those things are wrong, they are. Okay, you don't need me to tell you that. Uh, because when you already know and your brain already told you, you're right. Listen to your heart. It's calling to you, okay? And yes, you're right on all counts. Like, they should be decals so they're well balanced. Then you can scratch over the top of them or stencils or something like that. It's just an easier way to go. Uh, yes, the individual lines need more separation and stuff like that. The individual elements need picked out more in general. You should still have, like, very light panel modulation on traditional scale model vehicles that are in a color. Um, like, there should still be some amount of variation on the thing because light does shear across vertical surfaces differently. Um, so you want to capture some of that. But really, it's about picking out the individual elements. Like, right now, the wheels and the things inside there, those would not be the same green and stuff like that. So we really need to just punch up the detail and the finishing. That's the answer. You, you already had the calls. Keep going. All right, Zach, uh, with his monster, what do you think of the glow and moonlight effect on the Canoptic Reanimator? Um, yeah, so I can't really tell. So does the moonlight effect work? No, uh, it does not. Sorry to say, like it doesn't. That doesn't sell to me at all. Um, it just looks like this back part is kind of marble or white marble or something. I'm I'm not sure. It doesn't look like moonlight. I'm not sure that matters, but it doesn't look like moonlight uh, because again, there's no shadow line in here. So let's talk about ambient lighting versus a cast OSL. If that's the case, then you've got this broad, diffuse blue light that falls into a deep shadow that is then lit by intense, low-area OSL lights. Okay? And, and that's not what's happened here. We've got this whole back part basically in white. There's no middle shadow, and then we just pass into these bright yellow things that somehow make everything around them turn green. Right, there's no transition to it. So if you go back to the Silent King earlier, you'll see how he used like the yellow and green in there and then cast a soft glow. That again, I am in a bright ambient light right now and it casts hard shadows. Right? There's a lighter I just lit under my chin. See that's a very soft glow is very small. About to burn myself. Um so like that's the that 
those forward lights are going to have a very small radius of glow and tight color. They need to be little pinpricks of light and then shadow and then a broad, soft highlight on the back. So there you go, Zach. Hope that helped. Okay, next up, Matthew Little. Um, all right. Uh, he says the expected shading on the TMM uh, turned out better than it did, but he's not sure what went wrong. Uh, more general feedback in terms of what he needs to be working on, pushing past tabletop. So, yeah, no, I mean, first of all, like, tabletop standard, I think you're there. I don't think there's any issue with that. Um, so you're, you're definitely there. Now, again, how do we go farther? Um, I think the panel modulation on this vehicle is decent. I think you could go a little farther and we could pick out some of the edges a little more cleanly. Some of them, like these side edges here, these upward-facing edges, even this downward one, you know, the, we didn't get everything kind of picked out the way we should. And the modulation on some of the other elements doesn't feel as interesting. Now, how do we keep pushing? Well, we keep pushing it on the details, right? Like, we've got big, flat areas here. She's quite flat. Like, we don't have as much variation on her, on her individual model, her arm, the, the breastplate, the shoulder pads. Those need that same individual shading. These individual elements here, like, uh, sorry, where are we at here? Uh, like, the purity seals need text on them. These need text, text, stuff like that. Right, these individual elements need more strongly picked out. So the key is, how do we go farther? Well, we keep pushing, we keep bringing all the detail into life, okay? And again, more, especially when we get to the human figures in there, they should be well picked out, well detailed, to the same level as the whole vehicle itself. I think you're at tabletop, so now it's just continuing to push beyond there. All right, next up, Runar. Uh... Got an airbrush and working way through the vehicles. Didn't feel like painting with a brush. Sure. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at this guy. Um, again, good stuff. I think that the yellow looks nicely modulated. Uh, we definitely have more damage on the lower part, dirt on the lower part and the legs than we do up top, so that works for me. Um, we have a little bit of same size syndrome going on here. Like, there's a lot of little dots that are all kind of the same size. <laughs> and our scratches are all kind of the same size. So we want to vary that a little more. It's really hard to get it sold. You need some that are really big and then a cluster of little small ones and then a medium ones going in different directions. And you've got to vary direction, length, intensity. All of it needs to be varied, right? So that's what I would say. Um, now, as to the, the rest of the piece, again, the metals feel kind of flat. It seems like something I've said a lot of times in this video, it's something you really got to focus on with big vehicles is working on getting the metals to be interesting. And that means working in other tones, creating that volumetric highlighting, having things like rust and color and oil and, and brown streaks and stuff like that in there. So all that works. The thing that's honestly missing for me here is just the streaking. Um, this guy's bright yellow. They would normally show. So I like all the little dots and little errors. And there's a lot of chips, but I don't see any streaks. Maybe he's on a desert planet. It never rains. I don't know. But I think we could do some real good stuff with streaks. That's my number one thing that jumps out at me. But overall, great looking piece. Very cool. Okay. Uh, Sang with the uh, the Silent King. So this is my other Silent King. Um, this one does definitely stand out against the, the whole piece. Because again, he's a different color than kind of what's going on there. My biggest issue is the NMM doesn't sell across the piece. Um, you don't have enough contrast on the gold. It's not pushed far enough. It needs more light catches. Like, this is a nightmare of a piece to do NMM, M NMM on. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't it, it doesn't go up enough into ones and twos. Um, the Silent King himself is better. Uh, he has a little bit more variation on him in the right way. Like, his legs feel really good. Not sure about his chest. We might need some more darker points there. Uh, but the... the the gold on the his throne doesn't feel like it has enough one and two in it. It's mostly just five, four, three, maybe like a two and a half. So that's the number one thing that jumps out at me there. Hope that helps. All right, Raphael uh, with his tank uh, said, uh, you know, he's doing black. Tried to get the panel lines, didn't really show. Um, would an oil wash work? No, I mean it's no different like when if you're doing a black vehicle it's it's gonna look black and you can't get black on black so that's the problem uh general feedback as well as maybe a better faster way to do large checkers uh there is none um except like drawing the lines very carefully with something straight edge and then painting them in i am sorry to tell you that if you want to do a lot of checkers prepare for a long time this is a great heavy metal style gw vehicle it really is 
if that's what you're aiming at, you nailed it, okay? I, I really don't have much in the way of feedback for you if you're going for that sort of GW vehicle style. I think this is extremely well executed in that fashion. If you didn't want to go just in the GW style, then we need a little more panel modulation and to push the non-black a little bit farther. There's some very soft panel modulation here. It's not, it's not absent. I can see it. You could push it a little farther. And that, by the way, that's a no judgment. As I said, like one of these styles is not better than the other. I want to be completely clear. Okay. Um, but we could push it a little farther as far as the contrast goes. But I honestly think this looks great. I don't know that I'd mess with this too much. This was is, is a coherent style. It's executed extremely well. It's telling me a coherent story. It's very striking visually. I think it honestly looks great. So there you go. Uh, I wouldn't worry about the black lines again. This in a vehicle like this, you just it's hard to get them any darker. It's just one of the natures of one of the problems of doing black vehicles. Uh, I would pick out these frames in front of the lights uh, in some way, like darken those a little bit. That can make the light look brighter. Little touch. Okay, William, uh, and basically looking for the base and the weathering. Yeah, sure. So one thing I'll say is on a big night, um, I like that you put in some details like this, the, the, the number and the cross and stuff like that. I'd love to see a little more up top. Maybe that's still in progress. I think the base looks nice. Uh, good, good dirt on the feet. That's all fine. Um, again, if we're going to have that much heavy mud up, then we need a softer patina extending up. You kind of did it on the right leg. The left leg, it's missing a little bit, so a little more dust and dirt going up. And then again, more tonal variation, more more contrast, more panel modulation on the upper areas uh, is, I think, the main thing missing. Uh, I don't really see a lot of actual weathering beyond that. Like, the lower weathering looks fine. I didn't really see a lot up top. Again, this all this guy looks just like pristine, like he rolled out of the factory and then walked through a mud puddle. So if you're going to weather this much down here, we got to do something up top. Okay, so like we've got to have more browns, more modulation, more variation. Don't leave the whole frame silver. Like do more. Pick stuff out. Make this thing broken up. You don't need to do a lot, but it can't just be all metal because that just screams like I airbrushed this thing silver and then stopped. Right? So you don't want that. All right, and finally, Florian, uh, with his uh, his piece, interested in feedback regarding the armor, the edge highlights, the fire, and just general feedback. Talk about speeding up toward the end. So, yeah, I noticed a couple things on here. I mean, obviously, you know that the stained glass could be looking a little better. I think that's probably where you got kind of sped up by the end. Um, I think the flames look fine. Um, they're, yeah, I'm okay with them. I, I don't really have much of an issue with that. You could work in a little more soft orange like this, this kind of orange that you've got here. Could have a little bit more of that worked in there. But yeah, for the most part, it works for me. I have no issue with that. Um, the brown feels a little too liney. So when you're doing this kind of like patina dusting along the bottom of tanks that people love to do, it shouldn't be like dirt, 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 stop, normal paint. Right? It has to fade up in. Okay? Fade. Lovely fade. Um, but it, it has to be like this soft transition. So that's actually the main thing that jumped out at me when I looked at this piece, was the dirt felt like way too strong and then just suddenly comes to a stop. I mean, this thing has like a bajillion details. These sisters' vehicles are ridiculous. Um, and then that and just like, you know, continuing to push the contrast on the non-panel parts. Uh, so like her chair, her, the stained glass, the guns, you know, those kinds of things. Continuing to push your contrast and your detail on those. I suspect that's where you probably ran out of time. Purple really works for me. Edges work for me. I have no problem with that. Great color. Modulation works. Edges work. I'm good with all that. So, there you go. Uh, that brings us to the end of the month. Great stuff this month. Thank you to everybody who submitted. Uh, really appreciate it, as always. Uh, thank you to everybody. Next month is going to be single figure. I imagine that'll be a big one. Uh, we'll do what we can. Uh, so, Thank you to everyone who submitted. Again, if you're interested in joining, link is down in the description. Feel free to click on that. Answer all three questions. Uh, I hope this feedback session was helpful. But as always, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.